A pleasant Thursday evening to you. It is Thursday, June 1st, 2023, and I welcome you to yet another episode of Let's Talk with Annette. I must apologize for the um, unforeseen circumstances we encountered last Tuesday, but that being said, we're happy to be back in studio live to share with you um, as we prepare for local government 2023. That being said, um, I will go straight into um, my guest, the topic for this evening, because I want to give them adequate time, you know, to discuss. But even before doing so, let me put on record, the PPPC regime has announced that the 40,000 cash grant Per child will be paid outcome from Monday, June 5th, 2023. And I want to say to you, Guyana, Guyanese, this is vote by it. I have absolutely no apologies to make. You would recall that last year, 2022, the cash grant was paid on the, I think it was the last week just before the school term. In 2021, similarly, the cash grant was paid the last week just before the school term ended so that it will give you, the parents, adequate time to procure your child's school outfit for the new semester period or the new school term, which begins in September. But that being said, this announcement came at a time, I think, as a surprise to many Guyanese. Despite the naysayers are saying, you know, they're happy for the cash grant. But rest assured, come August 2023 into September 2023, many students, many pupils will not be able to attend school for the first week into the second week when school reopens in September of 2023. Why? Because the money paid in June, just before, a week just before the local government elections, bills had to pay, carnival, you know, came upon us, so we had to, you know, get our stuff to attend the carnival and fit up and all kind of thing. I'm, I'm talking serious business here. Yes. Serious business here. This PPPC government is on the road of vote buy it. That is why they're paying monies out. They're giving 2000 in, 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 in um, 20000 sorry, in envelopes. 250000 cash grant. Two or sometimes 300000 cash grant. Hmm. This is what the People's Progressive Party Civic is doing. Taking our money from the oil to pay out so that they can entice persons to vote PPPC. But I want to say to you guys, I know you're smart, I know you're intelligent, and I know you will not be used cheaply. You will not sell your votes. 
you will not sell your votes to the People's Progressive Party Civic. I will say boldly, you take the money because the money belongs to all of us as taxpayers. When you receive whether a 40,000 for a child or 120,000 for three children, I am saying to you, you got to put up the money. Put up that money because, as I said before, when September comes, we cannot, we should not deprive our youths from attending school. So I think I will pause on that for a moment. And let me reintroduce my guest to you. From my far left, Brother Gregory Fraser, um, constituency is currently a serving <coughs> councillor and he's also recontesting for his constituency and that is constituency eight. Mm -hmm. To his right, we have Brother Gordon Dummett and he's contesting in, con in consistency three for the very first time. To his right, we have Sister Yvonne Ferguson, another contestant recontesting for her um, constituency there in constituency number 11. And to my immediate left, I have brother Clayton Hines, who is currently a serving council, and he too is re seeking re-elections um, for his constituency there in constituency number five. So, lady and gentlemen, welcome once again to Let's Talk. And tonight, we, indeed, we will be talking. So, I will now give each of you a minute um, to probably reintroduce yourself, um, say exactly which constituency you would be um, contesting in, the, where the constituency begins, where it ends in a minute. So, I'll start. From my far left, brother Gregory Fraser. <laughs> I like being, I like going to the, the far <laughs> Yes. Good evening, colleagues. Mm -hmm. Good evening, viewers. It is nice that you have accommodated us. We hope that at the end of the program, we will edify you, and you will be better off knowledge-wise than you have started with us. My name is Gregory Douglas Fraser, MS. I am a current councillor, constituency eight. I'm running again for constituency eight as the uh, first party post councillor. I have all confidence that the people in that constituency will vote for me once more. They have said that to me, they have rallied around me, and I'm guaranteed that the constituency, the constituents will rely on me to give leadership, good leadership, leadership that I've been giving throughout the years I've been a council. Thank you very much, Brother Damien. It's good night, um, Madam Chair. Thank you for the opportunity again for um, being here tonight. Um, my name is Gordon Dummett. My first name is Damien Gordon Dummett. Um, I am representing constituency three for the first time um, and also um, backing um, under the APNU. Um, I'm looking forward uh, for this opportunity to serve the community um, and also more so the people of Guyana. Come June 12th, I am asking you from now to start, please, uh, considering giving me the opportunity to serve you and the community at large. Um, the response to the community is quite positive. I know one of the one of it was that um, the PP is saying to the to the constituents and the citizenry that the PNC and the APNU is no longer in existence. <laughs> um, where you are being all the time and so on. So they're happy to see that we're back and. Um, they're excited and they're ready to vote. So again, I'm asking you, I'm ready. I am charged up, I'm fired up, I am ready to go, I'm ready to serve. I believe in serving leadership and um, bet, bet on me to, to serve you well. Um, 
upcoming the next local upcoming local government election. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brother Dominic, Sister Ferguson. Good night, Chair. Good night, comrades. Good night, viewers. Once again, my name is Yvonne Ferguson. I am running for a consistency level. Mm -hmm. At present, I'm a sitting councillor right now. And my consistency is bordering from Northeast of Penitons, East of Penitons, West of Penitons, the island, Sideline Dam, Middle of Penitons, Riverview, and Alexander Village, Alexander Village. This evening, I am here once more again asking that I will continue the good work, and those of you who know, know that I have worked tirelessly in that consistency. <coughs> that is why I won it, and I'm continuing to work tirelessly in that consistency, so I will win it again. I have done a lot of things in that consistency for various persons. So I'm asking it again to give me a chance again so that I will continue <coughs> the good work and finish what I have left off. Thank you very much. Brother Hans? Well, yeah, I'm... Here again, it's me again, I normally say, and I want to say <laughs> thanks for having me on this program because it is my view, I representing um, Constituency 5. Constituency 5 is from Eastern Highway, which would include Brom Park, Farmersfield, Lelendal, Pattinson, North and South, Turkine, okay. North, and Turkine North, Cummings <coughs> Park, Cummings Lodge, North and South. Now, that constituency is constituency five, and you have a lot of entertainment centers where you have um, the, what's, what's, what's it called? Hard Rock Cafe and University of Ghana, all movie those, town. Movie Town and all those things are in my constituency. I want to say to the people of constituency five, <coughs> Our constituency happens to be amongst maybe two of the largest in Georgetown. Since I've been serving in constituency five, there are lots of things that I have done. And I know that one of the roles that a representative who's representing a constituency in the local government <coughs> elections is that the people have to believe and trust you to make sure that you represent their interests and their cause. And I've been doing just that. Yeah. Because there is evidence. I have evidence to show. Because I've done bridges. I have done a community, rehabilitate a community center in Afield. I've been able to negotiate, collaborated with the central government in relation to doing roads, bridges under the IDB program in not just for constituency five, but constituency five and six, because they're all kind of linked together. You know, we commonly call the place Sophia. Mm -hmm. But like I say to people every time they refer to that area, that block of land at Sophia, there are four estates that exist in that constituency. It is Sophia, Lilliandal, Pattinson, Turkine, and Cummings Park. Those are the five uh, estates. estates when we refer to so but people commonly refer to the black of land. But you see the reason I'm saying these things is that some of our people in Georgetown doesn't understand that that community was not developed by government. It was only when the APNU came into into government that some aspects of regularization and infrastructure <coughs> works were being done. The, that community was developed largely by the people themselves. They negotiated with private co kind of companies to dig, to do the pipeline, to do a number of things because the common talk, so fire, was classified as the PPP as a depressed community. Yes. As a depressed community because people have graduated from every region of this, of this country to live in that block of land. So this place that they commonly refer to as so fire is like the United States of America. Because people from all 10 regions live in constituency five. Mm. And there are lots of investors uh, that have oh, taken up uh, our land in <laughs> Lelandal and Turkine. We have and these are some of the reality. And I have been representing forcefully the interests of everyone 
in the constituency so far because I have evidence of work. And I should say that since I'm on the council, the people there who had to use the money to go to the bank to get loans, I recommend it to council that they do not charge them interest on the outstanding taxes that they owe because of COVID and in relation to the struggles that people were, so, they were enduring in that, in that constituency. So I'm running back to represent my people. Thank you very much, um, Brother Heinz. But <laughs> colleagues, um, I know that the race for the seat is tight. Yes. And I know you will agree with me. Yes. Because we, we have a, a number of um, independent bodies now running um, against the two major political parties, the PNC slash APNU and also the People's Progressive Party, um, Civic. So, I mean, and by no means of order, I would like for you to share with our viewers who are the persons that you will be running against in your constituency mm -hmm. and why you're the better of them all. So anybody can start. I'm brother Dummett. All right. oh, you're, you're the new you're the newbie on the on the block, so perhaps you, know, you can go first. Alright. Um to be honest, because somebody asked me that same question today, who is my um, running mate in the constituents? Um, there are two 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 um two two uh, one independent group and one political party, which is the PPP, and um, Bobby Vera have his um, group running in the constituents. Um, I personally said to the person today, um, I, I was trying not to be rude, but I was saying to them, I'm not really interested in selling any other group or party. I'm here to sell myself and the APNU, and I give them all assurance and reasons um, to vote for me. One, and one of the, the, the pitches I used today, and I was using for the last month or two, is my one, the first 100-day plan that I have um, that addresses the chronic disease that was created by the PVP. And the chronic disease is bad roads, flooded um, homes and yards, um, bad drainage, no street lights, security problems, I consider it a, it's a chronic disease. So I said to them, my first 100 days in office, I will definitely sit down. And there are two engineers that I'm, I'm in conversation with that we will sit down and work out a comprehensive plan and understand the, the roads and how it runs, how the drainage should be running, also um, where street lights should be um, placed and also um, how to uh, address the security challenges that we have in, in the constituents. So I'm at that particular stage, um, setting a plan for my first 100 days in office, addressing those issues, right? Um, one of the things that lots of persons may not know, and I've discovered this, and I shared this with the leader as well, that um, they are pretty, my, my constituency covers um, Peshad Nagar, North, East and Northwest, Campbellville, um, Bel Air Springs, Bel Air Gardens, and Bel Air Village. That's my boundary. Um, and it's considered predominantly a community, a uh, PP constituent or stronghold. Um, but the average PVP member or follower, so to speak, is afraid to come out and share and say that these are some of the issues that we're having. So when I go and knock on their gates and their doors, they call me and I say, hey, brother, I want to share this with you. Brother, this is happening, that is happening. And it is how I discover lots of their homes are flooding now. Lots of uh, their yards are flooding. They said they're living there for many years and they, 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 they never experienced the level of flooding that they're flood flooding now. They take me in, into the, some of the streets and show me the drains, yes. um, how it is blocked up and all kinds of stuff. And they're saying there's a councillor in the constituents and he's not doing anything. And 
and the councillor is from the People's Progressive Party. People's Progressive Party. Mm -hmm. When they question him, they, he's answering rude, he is not answering the question directly, and, and, and all other kinds of things. So I'm saying, give me the opportunity and uh, let me make the difference. Okay, thank you very yeah. much, um, Brother Dominic. So can you say to our viewers whether the current sitting councillor mm -hmm. for the People's Progressive Party Civic mm -hmm. is the candidate that is running once again for competing yes. against you. Yes. So that person is, is um, recontact, um, is re seeking re-election. Re re election Okay, good. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, sister. Yes. Bond? For me, <coughs> in my constituency 11, myself and group, we went in various areas. And so far, the response that we get in is good on the ground because most of the persons in East of Pentons, the island, West of Pentons, they are for us. I have done many contracts in that area. I'm the first person who brought contract in that area. Even before I was a sitting councillor, where I had about six persons I guess contract to, and it was well organized, it was well done. We were in government at that time, and <coughs> Annette, you could bear me out because you know about that. Yes. And I'm the first person. When I got on the council, I decided I start doing drainage. We continue the contract. We start to clean drainage in various areas. I have built two bridges. I have cleaned drains. I have put up 130 lights. Riverview, Alexander Village, West of Penitence, North East of Penitence, East of Penitence, Middle Road of Penitence. I have, I have, I've even got persons to go on their own into the local government system so that they could have got contract too. And I'm saying, as a sitting councillor right now, because of the PPP, who were, came into power, they had stifled us at the council level, so we could have not do much more that we could have done. So I'm saying this again, when I get back on the council, and I know I would be back on the council, because I have the confidence in myself, and I do have the confidence in my people. One more thing I would like to do before I leave the council is the squatting area where persons are living. I have tried to get that area regularized, and so far, when we were in government, I, we have done the regularization of giving the persons latted it out. But when the PPP came in, it halted. I then again formed a delegation and went in, and there it was a no no because they keep saying check back, check back, and I didn't check back because I realized the PPP is in there and they want to stifle us. I even told them that no persons want to have a home of their own so if you give them the title they will be able to go at the bank and get a little money so that persons could elevate themselves. Yeah. But we are elevating ourselves right there, right? We are not depending on the PPP to do anything for us. The PPP want to run Georgetown. They said they want Georgetown. They can, can't even run their own NDCs. So I don't know how I see it fit that they will be able to run Georgetown. So consistency level, I'm saying to you, on the 12th of June, go out there suddenly and put your vote for the APNU, which is my case will be on the top, and APNU, the bottom, the palm, which will be voting for the PR councillor. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. But you haven't say to our listeners and viewers who are your competitors in that oh, my competitors i think is bobby vera because i was made and son he's running all the consistencies okay. and an uh, indian guy in riverview i think his name is Singh. i cannot remember his first name but he had run already and he's running back again so he's running for the People's Progressive he Party. He is running for the People's Singh. Progressive Party. Okay, so you don't know the person who is running for on the Bobby Vera's um, um, group. group. Well, I cannot remember his name as present, but I know the per I know in person okay. who is so running. So therefore, 
you will classify yourself as being the better competitor. Well, I will classify myself being the better competitor before against them right. because I have proven myself and I will prove myself again. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Fraser? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge, there are two persons who are contending to be PR person, to be first past the post persons. Mm -hmm. One Mr. Ashby and one Miss Dawn. I think Miss Dawn happened to be from Mr. Bobby Vera. Okay. And Ms. Mr. Ashby, Ashby is from the PP. Mm -hmm. But you know I have a track record mm -hmm. that I don't think there's anyone can come close to. I was due to serve the people and I served them well. Across the constituency, they will tell you. They may be pocket, one or two pockets of naysayers. Mm -hmm. You would never please all the people all the time. So true. And so you attempt to please most of the people mm -hmm. most of the time. Yes. I was successful in doing that. Mm -hmm. There are young people that can testify to that. In fact, not only young people, because when I had been posting three health fairs per year at the corner of Ben, Durban and Louise Road in the church parking lot, it was not only for the young people, because I asked the medical officers to go with me. We find old people and people who are differently able, many they may not be old, but there are some other challenges that they encounter. And so we found them, and they were able to treat with them, and put arrangement in place for them, that they become a person of interest to the medical officers. They were doing regular visits to their homes as a result of the health fair that I've had here. In my constituency, I was able to touch young men and women who want to do driving, who want to drive, who want to learn to drive. By getting packages, take them and hand them the packages, and most of them are drivers today. And so they become their own entrepreneur, they become their own job owners. Yes. So they report to nobody but themselves. They're doing good at it. If I my memory serve me right, there was some 15 or more young men, well, men and women, let me come off the young, because yes. they are young and old, yes. and not old, but you know, yes. who I was able to channel to the ministry in our time in government, mm -hmm. and they are now contractors, they have been doing, they have been delivering, yes. as a consequence they are still there, and they are still delivering. In the constituency, I was able to put systems in place to cause young men and women to be trained in heavy duty machinery, drivers, operators, yes. heavy duty machine operators, cake decorating, um, shoots, um, seamstress, and a host of things. Yes. These people are there right now. I, if they are listening to me, they will say yes. I am one of those persons. There are many. I touch the lives of people in my constituency. Every fire, I present myself. And I just don't walk away. But I make sure I touch base with the people who are affected and make sure I offer some kind of assistance to them. And immediately or immediately after, I return and try to mobilize the kind of resources that I know they need them and that at least they can be a little better off or more comfortable. And I can go on and go on. There are two bridges that I put from the corner of Princess Street to Haley Street and one from Princess Street to Vercin General. I'm sorry to put those two bridges to I believe I was the first person, the first council, I brag on this one. <laughs> I am the first councillor 
who were able to engage the ministry now and then and get work done in my constituency doing the drains and the ambulance. Yes. And those work were given to the people in the constituencies. I mean, across the constituency, and I told you just mm -hmm. about persons who I was able to challenge and get them to do the same contract work. Mm -hmm. They employ persons, they are from the constituency, and they employ persons from the very constituency, mm -hmm. from the very neighbor, to do the work. Yes. So, mm -hmm. it is my area, and I'm cleaning my area, and I'm being paid for cleaning my area. It means that I'm going to do it better than anybody coming here to be okay. paid to clean. Yes. That's the idea. I can go on and on. I try to make sure that I deliver the kind of services to the people that can impact their lives one way or another. I have photograph of many different things that I did, you know. I recall making a presentation of textbooks, CXC textbook, to a few students on two or three occasions on the on the Ministry of Health land that they have, the new building here now, opposite coffee, mm -hmm. on that same thing. So give them school books, give them boots to go to school. I recall myself when I had to get a, co a colleague on, on board with me. We were responsible for taking a girl throughout her school, not throughout her school life, for about four years of her final years of schooling. We did that. I, was, I couldn't do it alone, and it wouldn't cost. It didn't cost me much. All it called was for my dedication, my patience, and you know to make sure that I go the pace with her. Yes. I was able to get somebody on board with me. We need to do that. There are so much that I do. I can go on and on, but my colleagues have to speak. Yes. But what I did was to deliver the service that people wanted, yes. and I did more than what the councillor is supposed to do. Majorly, the councillor's task is to do drainage, permits. <laughs> open play part that is the council responsibility, the council is council's land to make sure that they are clean so that you can have recreation facility and garbage. But there are many of us councillors who realize that you don't only stick to what you have to do as a councillor, but as a leader in the community, people look forward to get you to be to engage you in a number of other things that are not council related and you can't tell them, you know, I'm not I'm a council but I can't do this. You have to find a way to fit in and to work with them and to make sure that they are satisfied at the end of the day. Yes. I know that there are many who can testify mm -hmm. to my stewardship. Mm -hmm. I am running as a councillor. Mm -hmm. I'm running again and the reception I've gotten so far campaigning is resounding. Yes. It's excellent. Yes. Okay. I don't think there's anybody that will come close to me. Okay. I say that now. Okay. Well, all yes. right, so brother. Well, right. well, you know, you know Annette, when I listen to my colleague uh, Councilor Fraser, mm -hmm. my mind go back as to why do you have constituency representative? Mm -hmm. And it's not only for the capital city. This country is 216,000 square kilometers. In other words, 83,000 square miles. Mm -hmm. And to administer the affairs of this country from center, by central government alone, mm -hmm. it's a literal impossibility. And that is what has given birth to the local government system, yeah. where the people in the various communities identify, elect the representative as the intermediary between the community, the local body, and the central government. What has happened in the city over the years when the PPP was in government is that they did not, they had no interest in addressing or listening to the representation from the representative of the various constituencies or the various areas in the city and to take on board those needs and the recommendations coming from those people. As a result of that behavior, the city, it was left in the state it was in before it, the 2015 election. It was a stinking place. It was not no garden city. It was a garbage city. Now that act is deliberate. Now to hear this red formation, I don't even want to address them Correct. by the title or the acronym. Correct. This red formation suddenly 
come up on this up in in the scheme and saying new beginning new isn't beginning. that an indictment new beginning isn't that an indictment on the pvp government because you were there for 23 years you never did anything in fact in one instance mm -hmm. a minister of the government was wishing an epidemic break out yes. on the city so everybody would die, die. yes no my mm -hmm. god subsequent to that there was what i will call a litany, a long list of extrajudicial killing. Mothers wake up next morning over the sun gone. Or the wife looking for the brother, sister, and, and, and uncle dying mm. under the PPP. All these things have happened. And the only reason why those things are happening is because of the evilness of the PPPC. Now, how you can come to judge young people now to say to them, that you love them mm. and i love you but then at the back of your mind the level of disrespect that you show to a person where you are benefiting from the resources of this country and you're dispensing it in an unequal and partisan way and then you're coming to tell people who are suffering over the years you have created a chasm. Mm -hmm. You have created a chasm between the various ethnic groups, between the have and the have nots. They have created a chasm. So it is not easy in this country. So, therefore, when they come with this character of bringing kind of money to give people $20,000, $15,000, anybody suffering the way Guyanese are suffering, and the people in the city, especially <coughs> the poor people in this Georgetown, will gravitate towards taking the money. Yes. But it is not just offering the money. The condition I that they are attaching to this money. giving mm -hmm. is what is disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You don't have a decision. You don't have a choice if you take the money because they dictate things that you need to do. And I am so disappointed. In fact, it's horrifying to think. I have never seen Chase Green in all the campaign where she was at, at mayor go out and walk when she when she was with the pnc go to camp you know now she in rail and sun and and, and kind of long boots it's good for her to experience that because she has the right name chase green because they're going to chase her just now all right good but brother, brother Hines, i still would want you to say to your constituents there in constituency mm. five who are your yeah, competitors? Well, they are you competing <laughs> they, against? They have a why gentleman. are you? Why are you the better of the, of those that you're competing against? And it, the essence of knowledge is having it to apply it. Mm -hmm. I, I I want to start with just saying that the essence of knowledge is having it to apply. I'm not new to community leadership. I have been in community leadership from the time I came out of my mother belly. Right. If I can say okay. that way. Okay. Because I have always been a youth leader. I have always been a person in leadership position in the community where, where I grew up, at school, at workplaces, places that I've worked, and there are many, both locally and internationally. And I'm saying to people that I am living in Lelendal. I have worked to develop my home in Lelendal. I know the conditions of the people. I know the problems they face. There is a gentleman living in Farmer's Field who the PPP is putting up as the constituency candidate. His name is Andre. I think it's... I, I, I don't remember the, the, the surname, but his name is Andre. When I went on the council, when I was able to negotiate through council for us to get the NDIA to do our east to west main drains in Georgetown, and some of the other essential drains in the city. These were deliberate programs to facilitate what we were experiencing in terms of flooding with heavy rainfall. What I've noticed, when the PPP came into power, they continued to clean the main drains in the constituency. Mm -hmm. But that was a work that was started when local, local government was reintroduced again after 2015 by the APNU government. The other things that were being done, like for example, those roads and lights to the, where the essential service 
centers are, like health centers, schools, and so on, where, they, where we build those roads under the IDB program. We, what has happened when they came into power? Much of the monies that were supposed to finish the other streets, the PPP redirected the money to West Demerara and East Coast. Yes, yes. So those things are still left to be done. Mm -hmm. Now, I am always in combat with Mr. Edgel. I eventually was able, after some clamor, to get them to do the Blacker Bridge. Mm -hmm. And even that, the Blacker Bridge is not even completed because they still have to have lights. Mm -hmm. And the quality of its, of, of its approach still needs to be done. Yeah. I am on to him now regularly talking about it. He promised the last time we spoke that it was the engineers who were supposed to come to do do the kind of measurement to make kind of be feel road, a proper road. And I said to him then that they will have to do revetment and make the road a little little wider because it's too narrow for the volume of traffic because the main artery in the community going back and over to constituency 12. Now, these are some of the things. I have, re I have refurbished, rebuilt and refurbished a whole health center in there since I'm there, in, in, in Liliandal. I, and, and like I told you before, persons who have to go to the bank to get monies to build their homes, that will require them having to get a document, say, from the city council. Now, those persons I have recommended, and the arrangement is still in place, persons who owe taxes, and they will, there are no interest charges as a result of COVID to them, up to now. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a bridge li linking uh, Constituency 5 over the block of going across the Meadowbrook. Now, that was, a, that was a next task we have completed. Outside of that, I have continued collaboration with social groups, mm -hmm. including the church, the churches in my constituency where you will, those are the, uh, are the centers. And the guy who the PPP has put up to run against me, when I started at work on the east to west drains and the main drains, he used to come to me and ask me, you see, that, that, which I had, I'd offered him a, 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 a assistance at the time. And now, because these are people who does not have the wherewithal, nor the resource base to really address much of the problem that the people are facing in it, because they're, I have a list of things that are primarily issues that is classified as irritants mm -hmm. to the people in India. For example, the question of squatting is one of the sore points in that area where people live on the dam and so on. Because you have people who have regular plots and people who have irregular plots where they go and put a house on the dam and so on. You're going to resolve and live. Now, these are not issues that can be addressed in a piecemeal way. These are issues that you have to have collaboration, talk with people and here. Then you have to go now make representation of central government. How could we? Because persons who have complied with the law and have uh, kind of regular plots are complaining, say, look, you've got these people that are there causing low value to their kind of property. These are not issues that you can address in a piecemeal way. So the point I wish to make is that outside of this guy who the PVP has identified as a person who can make representation to these people, which to, who I don't <laughs> consider, I don't. the people cannot look to consider him as a representative for them <laughs> because I'm <laughs> leaps and bound ahead of these people. All right. Leaps and bound. And there's a, a group, I don't remember the, the actual acronym of this group. There's another group representing, and they are two independent. Um, Persons. Persons. Oh. So, in all, there are five people. Okay. Who are contesting, contesting. Four and myself. Right. Mm -hmm. You have the PPP, there's a group, and you have two other independents. So, mm -hmm. it's four and myself. Now, the, 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 <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, I may, in a good day, give them a two and a half. <laughs> At two and a half. All right, two and a half. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I know uh, time is, you know, is, is closing in on us. But um, I want to turn your attention to what is currently happening on the ground. I know the council got its own challenges right now. And I guess, you know, that's for some other uh, discussion. But what is happening on the ground currently is that 
the People's Progressive Party, see me? They have spread their wings, you know what I'm saying? Red, black, and, and yellow flags in certain, yeah, mounted in certain areas. But I want to say to viewers out there, you know, flags don't win elections. Correct. Flags don't win. Flags don't vote. Correct. Flags don't win elections. Correct. We got, it is numbers. It's elections. It's all about numbers. A numbers game, right? So you got these flags. You got this huge billboard. You know, very um, picturesque. You know, and also you got the payments of money, and we would have seen. A number of young people gravitating. I was in a in my constituency earlier today, and they're telling you straight up, the coalition didn't do anything for them. Yes. And we want we I need y'all to address that briefly. That's one. Secondly, mm -hmm. is that they're getting these contracts, and you know that many of the contracts that are being done in these constituencies are not going through the correct channel. Yes. Just last it's Sunday. I was in my constituency where, you know, I'm expected to vote constituency 7, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock in, in the dead of night. Mm -hmm. You got young men in gutter, mm -hmm. clean in gutter. Mm -hmm. How the work can be done like that? So Sorry. everything is being done in a hurried way. Why? And why is it that they're paying out these monies? And what message would you leave? for our young people and parents as it relates to this pay, you know, the buying of votes and what they should do. So, any, you know, um, the job you Annette, know. I would say this. The young people are gravitated to money. Mm -hmm. The young people, I would have conversation with them because I remember I'm having a business there. What most of the young people would say sometimes, yeah, they did nothing for us. And they know that some of the young people know that we did for them. Y'all did nothing for us. This so correct. what we doing? It's better we go because the people gave me money. Mm -hmm. Y'all just come here while we walk. Y'all give me money. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't give me nothing. Mm -hmm. The people giving us money. Look, today a young lady, sh a, a young man called me. And I speak with him. He said he went up to the lender to collect a grant of $250,000 mm -hmm. that they were giving out today. Mm -hmm. We are not in that position, and we are not to give out grants to persons. Persons must be of their own free will mm -hmm. to come and say, look, I'm coming on board with y'all. Mm -hmm. Because they give out $250,000, they give out $200,000. That is not money that we've done just now. Exactly. Look how many contracts and how many things we did. Not even in five years mm -hmm. and at that time we did not have any oil money and we did so much what i would say some of these people are ungrateful because we did so much a persons look when the school time we share out book bags we share out hampers we did so much free transportation that is one of the main reasons why those children born in that dorm because we had buses boats and all those things so those children could be traveling up and down the government came in, they took it away. Yes. You understand? So we have to be serious and we have to send the message seriously to young people. Because mm -hmm. it's the young people who is gravitating for the money. Exactly. exactly. And young people, come the 12th of June. Come out and vote because you all may get them. If you even these people go in power, they got time with the young people. All of those people will be pushed back. Mm -hmm. They will be looking after the Look for instance. Independence Boulevard where, where they're working. They take on some young people, then they knock them off because the contract is some problem. But people say, no, God, look, I've been doing this, but all those things were in place. Yes. And they came and they pick it, yeah, up. Pick it up. And you feel when they do those places, the value of those places would raise. And persons who cannot pay the rates, and that's what you think they would do. Mm -hmm. Sell the place, they will lose the property, and they will get the funds and the coins. Exactly. So, yeah, I just want to add to what um, my colleague is saying tonight, that um, not only the residents, but the vendors mm -hmm. yeah. need to come out and vote. Yes. I was listening to um, the President Mayor New Bradge, and he was encouraging the vendors to come out and vote. See so if they can go to Providence and, and, and remove your, your business, 
they can do it right there on Regent Street and other uh, vending areas in the city of Georgetown. So I'm saying to the vendors as well, come June 12th, come out and vote. Um, for voters' education, no politician can tell you when I give you this 5,000 or this 100,000 when you go in the booth, take out a picture and all those things, those things are illegal. Do not get involved in those kinds of business. The PBP wants to win office, win it the correct way, not, exactly. not in that phony, dishonest way. Right? So I'm encouraging you, it's your money. Don't let Jagdio or anybody say to you that it's the PVP money. This is our money that they're, they're given to you. Our taxpayers' money or the oil money is, is our money, it's Guyanese like money. Bribing. Or bribing Bribers. you. Right. So I'm saying to you, do not fall for the traps. Mm -hmm. It is temporal. Exactly. Right? Exactly. When election's done, they can kick it to the curve, if I should use that uh, that term. Mm -hmm. Young people, dip on your medi. Mm -hmm. Dip on your medi. All right. All right. Don't say we can't. We can tell you all tonight. I want to I wanna say two things. I, and I want to put the current situation of both on the ground and what obtains in terms of this local government election in that context. What is happening here is as a result of deliberate action on the part of the PDPC government when they were in power for 23 years where they starved the city all these projects that have come into being now as a result of the availability of resources in this case I'm talking about the financial resources all these projects that they're doing now what should have been the case that the monies to execute those projects ought to have gone through yes. the mayor and city council of Georgia, the municipality. Yes. But I recall very clearly when the PVP came into, into government, the minister met with all councillors, the current then a minister, uh, Minister Darren, I think that. his name. And I don't know if he his tongue slip or what, but he, he said to us that the president has organized a ministerial task force to address issues of Georgetown. Yes. That was very interesting to all of us. So a request was made by councillors then. Beautiful minister, I like what you have said. Mm -hmm. Would you make available to the council mm -hmm. the report Mm -hmm. and, the, and the decisions of this task force mm -hmm. so that the council yes. and central government can work collaboratively yes. to address these issues. We have seen nothing, nothing. since. Mm -hmm. All that we know is that since then there have been works going on in streets and drains and the, 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 uh, the military trucks on Sundays, you see them picking up garbage, cleaning, all these things. But what we need to do uh, to understand is that these things that the government is doing cost money. Yes. But at the same time, the same government or city council, billions. a lot of money, billions of dollars yes. in taxes, which they're not paying. Yes. But you're executing this work using the people's money or monies that should have come through the council oh, to execute these works. Yes. But it is not only things that are being, like you, you, you have said, things are being done through other kind of channels, which is illegal. Yes. No. What the, if these projects cost a million dollars, when you go to the parliament, you're going to hear the minister or anybody reporting, it's, it's a hundred million we have spent or a two billion we have spent in executing works in Georgetown, fixing road and so on, mm -hmm. things that were supposed to have been done the by council. the council. You're not giving the council the money, but you have starved the council of money, putting infrastructure and other kind of facilities in bad shape, mm -hmm. blaming the council and the administration of the main city council for the <laughs> shortcomings and failures. But now you come as if you are the saving yeah. grace 
with this new red inner formation saying that you will be making things anew. Making George a, a new beginning. A new well, beginning. beginning. Comrades, new beginning. I'm, I'm saying to comrades in Georgetown, and I want you all to understand the history of the PPP is one of all wickedness and what, what, what I call division. Mm. Wickedness and division because representatives of the various constituencies work closely with the people in their constituencies. When you do these things, it is, and you're talking about one Guyana. You're dividing, you're dividing people. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to people in my constituency, constituency 5A field, B field, farmers field, plumpa, not just be on your medi. Think what you're doing. Think why These you people do. don't have any interest in your welfare. Yes. Their plan is deliberate to kick you further down the road as an empty can. Mm -hmm. okay. And I am not prepared because I live in my constituency mm -hmm. and I'm prepared to go to battle to make sure that my people, mm -hmm. they are properly represented. No, no, we should ask, we should ask ourselves. Ask the council a, a question. No, I, mean, I, I want to ask the council. What do you think, council, <laughs> would happen when you, when the, let us assume that the people we go, in, that we go, go and win. All right, all right. What are you going to do to the people? All right. I don't know exactly what I, 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 I get the point. It's a possibility. possibility. Yeah. yeah. Let me hear you. Go ahead. You know, Ghana's the fastest growing economy in the world. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to be begging the government of the day. No. To give the kind of resources they need to give to the council. I agree. Exactly. Georgetown mm -hmm. is the capital city of Guyana. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And any country wants to know that the capital city is well taken care of. Yes, it should be the best. And so whatever you do, you will want to do in a structured and, and, and a structured way, mm -hmm. an organized way, so that the end of the day, transparent in a transparent way also, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you see the result that you expect to see. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The works that are going on around the place are all, in my view, election work. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are not done properly. Yes. Some of the work, I'm sure, most of the work in Georgetown are to be are to, are given to distilled drains. But the boys are going and just um, gray tap, to tap. the carpet, slap dash, and move on. Mm. And so, so the drains are still left clogged. Exactly. Yes. Because it's not distilled in. Yes. But the money gone. Gone. Nobody's doing no kind of. Nobody's doing no kind of monitoring. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doing the kind of policing they need to do to make sure that the citizen in Georgetown, in the different world, get value for money. Yeah. Exactly. All they all they're concerned with is to make sure they try to pay all this money and people see people in the area <laughs> doing money. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people in the area, but what benefit? What is, how, how is it? Be, how is it benefiting me as a rate payer, as a taxpayer? Mm -hmm. The drain is still left there unclogged, uh, mm -hmm. unclogged up. Clogged up. Because you weed the grass, you ain't clean the, you ain't in the drain. Yes. The bridges are still left clogged up. Yes. You ain't cleaning the bridges. Yes. And so we have to look at these things. We have to, our people have to be smart. Mm -hmm. The money is yours. Whatever form or fashion mm -hmm. the government choose to give it to you, mm -hmm. with whatever language they will give it to you with, take it. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Yes, yes. But be smart. And you must know. That that money cannot do what you really want money to do exactly. to be done for you. Exactly. You must understand that. You must know that, exactly. and you must know that if you are to be given a grant, it must be something that you can use and look at tomorrow. And say this is what the grant is done. Exactly. exactly. Not a, a, a handout mm -hmm. that you go and by the time you go into matter somewhere, you're coming out and you what realize that you have some extra change in your pocket that's also gone <laughs> because the, the grant money gone and, and the change one that you really didn't plan to spend. <laughs> The, the bastard of goods cost more than the grant. Exactly. So you and have and to touch the, 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 the savings you have in your pocket. Mm -hmm. We got to be smart. Indeed, we have to be smart. We have to be smart. You know, time has caught up on us. Great. But um, just before we bring the curtains down, I want to add to what, you know, all of you have said here earlier. You know, these <laughs> contracts that are now being executed in the various const uh, constituencies. Look, a typical example, 
is Cemetery Road. Mm -hmm. The works on Cemetery Road from Princess Street to Sussex Street mm -hmm. commenced since September 2022. And according to the report, according to the contract, the works are expected, the project rather, is expected to be completed in July of 2023. Mm -hmm. That project, that particular project is lagging behind. Mm -hmm. And viewers, you know what is the cost of that project? Mm -hmm. 475 million mm -hmm. and 70,000 and change. And if we're to drive through that particular corridor. Mm -hmm. You can't see a hundred million in works mm -hmm. because I'm telling you that corridor currently is risky. It's life threatening to motorists. Mm -hmm. I use it on a daily basis and you gotta be careful how you navigate it. So this government, we have an, a regime that cares absolutely, that cares absolutely nothing about how they spend taxpayers' money. They wake up today and decide, well, look, they got a friend who probably might have supported them in, 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 in some time, mm -hmm. and they got to give a payback. So Avinash Constructing Company, I'm putting you on notice. Your dead date for the end of that project is July 2023. Mm -hmm. We're already in June. in June. And we can't see 50, not even 10% of the works completed. completed thus far. My comrades, for your closing remarks, I give you a minute each, a minute each, yeah, and I'll start just, with you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> because you know, I could talk here oh, for the full hour on this program here alone. Going, you know. Because I think I have enough things to say. <laughs> I am I, I'm glad that you have that you have disclosed what is the value of that mm. that, that project because I didn't know what the numbers were. But in my comments I said to you that this ministerial task force which they created when they went into the power to address issues of jobs is precisely what I was saying. These works that are going on in the city cost billions of dollars. They are reporting billions. But in truth and in fact, when the work was supposed to be going through because they're doing it, they're doing it themselves. Now you stop to think. Had those works been done in a way, I said, through, going through the council, what do you think would have been this? The council would have been in a position to address a plethora of issues that are affecting citizens. And in closing, my last remark on this thing is that this local government elections, I want to say to every person in Georgetown, young and old, on the 12th of June, when you wake up in the morning, don't hesitate. Rush down to the polling station, wherever that is in your constituency, and vote for APNU, the palm. Look for the palm. And where you see the palm is on your right hand side. I'm sorry I didn't walk with a, a sample of how the ballot paper going to look. Yes. So you would have been able to see how to vote. You look for the palm, and for the con at the top of the, of the ballot paper will be the face of the constituency candidate. In constituency five, you're going to see this ballot man. <laughs> All right, good. Okay. So vote for Clayton Hines. Brother, brother Fraser, then we come to um, brother Domet, and we'll close with sister Ferguson. Thank you, Annette. All I want to do is to <laughs> appeal to my constituents that I have delivered and my promise and more, I'm prepared to give leadership to the constituency, and I'm asking you to vote for me again. I'm not asking for a chance, like a political party is asking for a chance. You've given me more than one chance, and I've delivered. And I will continue to deliver, because I've already received your mandate. Thank you very much. Brother, comment? Yes, thank you um, for having us, uh, having me tonight on your program. Um, constituency tree, um, I'm ready. I'm committed to the task ahead. Um, come not only June 12th, but beyond June 12th. Um, I, I will endorse what my brother say. Don't hesitate, wake up early, get out there and vote. I'm not too sure it's going to be a national holiday, 
but mm -hmm. please uh, get up mm -hmm. early and go and do the right thing. Um, this is what I'm saying. And I'm asking you again, do you know how to vote? You have the face at the top and the party same is at the bottom. And you, you mark your X. Please don't let no nobody encourage you to take up any photos or anything of the sort. Don't even sell your ID card for, for a, a few dollars. Mm -hmm. Right? So come June 12th, I'm asking you to, 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 to vote for me. I'm ready. I am committed. I am believing serve leadership. And my word is my bond. I'm in it to win it. So thank you. Thank you. In, it, in it to win it. Sister yeah. <laughs> okay. Consistency 11. He went out with me once here again. You know what she did and she would do it again. And I'm asking that you get up early on June the 12th. Go out there. Let them know that, that Georgian is not for grab or Georgian is not for sale. Go out there early with your numbers. Vote AP and you. You will see the palm on the top with my face and go down at the bottom. You will see the palm. Just put your X, a little tiny X. Don't make no any mistake or do not spare the vote. Thank you once again and good night. Thank you very much. I wish each and every one of you success at the, at the upcoming polls. Just as we prepare to bring the curtains down, I also want to make an appeal to those disciplined um, persons Sorry, who will be voting tomorrow, June the 2nd, 2023. Today I was I visited um, the East Bromfeld police station there and I had a chit chat with a few of the officers and they were encouraged to vote solidly for a partnership, APNU, a partnership for national unity. So please, please do your thing tomorrow. The only hope lies in the APNU. Um, tomorrow, Friday, the APNU will be holding a public meeting in Constituency 5. And for those of you who are living in that area, um, between Dennis Street and Seafield, Seafield Road, Turkine, we will be there. And on Saturday, Turkine. That's a correction. So that's they, postponed. They, 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 they had to postpone that meeting because tomorrow is a voting day. Okay, okay. And as a result of the, it's being the voting day, mm -hmm. the Georgetown district has decided that they would not be holding any public okay. meeting tomorrow. Okay, we so have to yeah. reschedule that. Okay, for exactly. Well, Saturday, 3rd of June, 2023, mm -hmm. We will be in constituency 11, and that is Sister Yvonne Ferguson's constituency. And the meeting will be held at the fruit stall, that's Lane Avenue and Hunter Street. And on Sunday, we will be in Agricola, that's constituency 15. So please, I encourage each and every one of you to go out and listen to your leaders and your candidates for the various constituencies. I thank you so much for joining us this evening. I trust that the conversation was well received in your homes. And do, I, I also want to encourage you to spread the message, yes. APNU all the way. All May God way. richly bless you. May God bless your family. And once of all, may God bless our beautiful nation, Gaya. Thank you very much for tuning in to yet another episode of Let's Talk with Annette. Do have a blessed weekend. Ta-ta.